In this lesson we're looking at indices and using them to represent square and cube roots. At the top of the page you'll notice there are two rules written. The first one says that the square root of a is equal to a to the half power. The second one says the cube root of a is equal to a to the third power. So in indices we can use a to the half to represent square root and a to the third to represent cube root. Why is this so? Let's have a look at an example. The square root of a number is the number when multiplied by itself gives the original number. So in the example I've got the square root of 100 equals 10. Another way of writing that is 10 times 10 equals 100. When I multiply 10 by itself I get 100. So 10 is the square root of 100. I could also write it this way. The square root of 100 times the square root of 100 equals 100. So therefore, the square root of 100, which is the same as 10, times the square root of 100, which is the same as 10, equals 100. At the bottom of the page you can see that we've actually got the same thing but using the symbols a. The square root of a times the square root of a is equal to a. Now another way of writing that to see that it actually gives the same answer is to write a to the half power. So above that I've got a to the half power multiplied by a to the half power using our laws from indices, which is the first law, you add the powers when you're multiplying, you end up with a to the half plus a half, and a half plus a half is obviously one, and because we don't need to keep the one because we, um, it's not necessary to show it, the answer is a. Now as you can see, both of these things give the same answer of a, indicating that the square root of a is equal to a to the half power. We call the square root of a third form, and the a to the power of half index form. You will have noticed from the last slide that there seems to be a bit of a pattern happening here. So the general form for the third version and the index version is that if you've got the mth root of a, it's equal to a to the 1 over the mth power. Let's look at some examples of that. So if I had um, the cube root of 8, that would be equal to 8 to the 1 third. And the answer to that's 2, because... 2 times 2 times 2, 3 of them multiplied together, makes 8. Here's another example. Let's do the fourth root of 16. We could write that as 16 to the quarter power. The answer to that is also 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 16. 4 lots of 2 multiplied together make 16. Another example would be the fourth, the fourth root of 625, which, is, which could also be written as 625 to the fourth power. And the answer to that is 5. Because 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 equals 625. Here are a couple of examples about changing from one form to the other. In the first example, I've got it in index form. If I want to rewrite that as third form, I just simply write square root of m because it's half power. You note we don't need to put a little 2 here even though the general form of the rule suggests that you do. It's one of those things in maths where if it's missing, we know it's a 2. So the square root of m is always the tooth root of m. 
or the second root of m. In the next example, I've got 64 to the half power. Half power means square root, so I can write that as square root of 64. Again, I don't need the little 2. I can work out the answer to square root of 64 because I know that that's equal to 8, and that's because 8 times 8 equals 64. So 8's the answer. In the next question, I'm going the opposite way. I'm changing from the third form back into the index form. So a to the third root, or the cube root, is actually a to the third power. In these questions, we're simplifying the expression shown into its simplest form. So you'll notice there's some brackets in the first one. Like all good mathematicians, we'll do brackets first because bod mass tells us we should. So just looking at what's inside the bracket, it's 64 to the power of third. That means the cube root of 64. The cube root of 64 means the number multiplied by itself three times to make 64. And the answer to that is 4. And that's because 4 times 4 times 4 equals 64. So that means what we've got at the top, 64 to the third power, I can replace that as 4 to the power 2. So what I've done is I've worked out what 64 to the third is. The answer to that is 4. So instead of having 64 to the third all to the power 2, we've got 4 to the power 2. And 4 to the power 2 is 16. In the next question, I've got the square root of 16 p squared. Now, you remember that when we don't put in a sign between a number and a letter, it means there's a multiplication sign there. So in here, between the 16 and the p is a multiplication. To make it easier for you to see, I'm going to actually write it with the multiplication in. Now, as we know, in the third form, a square root is the same as the power a half. I can replace that with 16 times p squared to the power a half. So turning that into index form. The 16 doesn't have a power, or it doesn't have one shown, so that means it's really power 1. Going back to our laws to do with brackets, we multiply the powers inside by the powers outside, the power outside. So this is going to be 16 to the power 1 times a half multiplied by p squared times the power a half. 16 to the power of 1 times a half is just the 16 to the power a half, which means the square root of 16, which is 4 p to the power 2 times a half is p to the power 1. Again, in maths, we don't need to write the multiplication sign between the letter and the number in this case, or write the number 1 for p, so 4p is the final answer. In the last example, we've got a cube root sign, which is covering the 8 and the, the k to the power 6. Again, there's a multiplication sign between the 8 and the k. So let's write that in just so we can see it. So we've got the cube root of 8 multiplied by k to the power 6. I can change the cube root sign into a third power using our index laws. 8 times k to the power 6 to the third power. Power. Again, the 8 has a power 1, even though it's not shown. So let's now use our index laws to remove the brackets. I'm going to get 8 to the power 1 multiplied by a third, multiplied by k to the power 6 multiplied by a third. 8 to the 1 third power means the cube root of 8, which is 2 because 2 by 2 by 2 equals 8. k to the power 6 times a third is k to the power 2, because 6 times a third is 2. 
that means that the answer is going to be 2k squared.